Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel, guys, where I want to talk about the new study done on topical finasteride. And this video is going to be very interesting, especially for all of you guys who are interested in minimizing side effects with oral finasteride or you don't want to take oral finasteride at all costs and you want still something effective, something that is going to inhibit the DHT at the hair follicle level. And this study is interesting because it uh, obviously includes a bigger sample size and is also randomized placebo controlled trial and it's a new study from 2021. So make sure you stay tuned until this very end. Make sure you smash that like button right now if you are enjoying these regular hair loss related updates coming on this channel. And as always, before we start with the video, this video has been brought to by GoFiber, which are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice from them and try them out. See if you like them. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Matt. I'm your host on this channel, informing you about hair loss treatments, educating you about hair transplants. And if you are new, you should definitely subscribe to the channel right now. Hit that bell if you want to bring your hair back to the next level. Maybe you are a guy with receding hairline, you're balding, you want to still have that hair for the next couple of years because the hair makes you look younger and better. So you should go to my website, definitely mattdominance.com where you can get free education on topics of hair transplants, uh, which can really give you that hairline back with the nice density, you know, something that the hair loss treatments cannot even do, you know, so that's usually the next step that usually guys that are watching my channel are gonna do eventually sooner or later. And then they usually inform themselves first on my website. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about topical finasteride, guys. Topical finasteride has been developed um, initially as a result of guys reporting side effects from oral finasteride. And, you know, although studies are saying it's somewhere between one to 2%, you know, things like libido issues, erectile dysfunction, and all that stuff, potentially brain fogs, and all these maybe like also neurological side effects, uh, you know, chances are the numbers can be even higher, okay? Maybe even slightly higher than 2%. We don't know exactly. Anyways, they developed topical finasteride, so the side effects could be minimized. That's why they started microdosing the topical finasteride as well. Maurizio Casarini is responsible for this topical finasteride development and all of these studies that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Maurizio Casarini did three studies on topical finasteride 0.25% and the first one he did already in 2014 where he pretty much uh, found out that a strong or similar inhibition of plasma DHT was found after one week of treatment with the topical and tablet finasteride formulations. So he realized that 0.25% topical solution, uh, topical finasteride solution, had very similar plasma DHT suppression. So he started lowering that concentration or applying less of that 0.25% solution to find out whether he can reach a sweet spot where the uh, suppression of uh, DHT in the scalp can be pretty high still, but the suppression of DHT in the plasma or finasteride exposure in the plasma, if you will, will be minimized. That's why he did another study two years later in 2016, where he started lowering the amount of uh, topical finasteride solution applied on a target area. And he realized that this 0.25% uh, topical finasteride solution applied at doses of 100 to 200 microliters, that means 0.1 to 0.2 milliliters liters results in an appropriate inhibition of scalp DHT potentially minimizing the untoward sexual side effects linked to a systemic DHT reduction all right and this brings us to the third study which I want to introduce you today the study number three was a randomized double blind double dummy parallel group trial the trial length was 24 weeks number of subjects was 458 three groups were involved in the trial plus placebo oral and placebo topical, group number two, placebo oral or topical finasteride, and group number three, placebo topical and oral finasteride. Application had been done one to four sprays every single day, once a day. I'm gonna be talking about the application in a minute in more detail. And assessment was done at the week number four, eight, 12, and 24, as well as the measurements, target area, hair count, target area, hair width, and hair growth questionnaire, 
for patients uh, for subjective evaluations. And lastly, very important, DHT concentration had been also done. The assessment had been done at the week number four, eight, 12, 24, and also 28 after the completion of the trial already with high performance liquid chromatography followed by tandem mass spectrometric detection. As far as the way they were applying the topical finasteride, so again, they were applying the 0.25% solution, which is an equivalent of 2.275 milligram of finasteride per milliliter, but they only applied 50 microliters, okay? That means this is like 1 20th of that uh, solution. So it's like uh, very little. That equates to 0.1114 milligram of oral finasteride. So it's a very little dose. If if you think about it and this uh, dose was applied on this uh, target area as you can see this guy was probably on the crown it was just one spray okay some of the guys applied more than one spray if the doctor um, you know allowed them to do it on other areas where they were thinning so some of them uh, applied up to four sprays so that would still make it a very low concentration four sprays would equate to an equivalent of 0.5 milligram of finasteride per one uh, topical application. Uh, I don't know, uh, by the way, if this is like the best way to apply. I think that the application with the dropper is much better, especially if you have thick hair. You know, if you do a spray, there's going to be a lot of that topical finasteride solution, which can get like caught up on the hair and will never reach the scalp actually. So I never was a big fan of using these sprays. Uh, I was always a fan of a dropper when you can drop it to the skin and then just rub it into the skin. That was much, much better. I think it's much more effective way of you know getting the most out of that topical solution but anyways so that could maybe interfere with the results because some guys could have thinner hair and thus more 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 of that sprayed liquid will you know actually reach the skin and guys with thicker hair or maybe some curly long hair like most of that um, topical will probably get uh, stuck on the hair will never reach the skin so this is just one thing that could potentially interfere with the result let's take a look at the efficacy uh, let's start with the target area hair count now on the right axis we can see the baseline week 12 week 24th so it's the time period and on the left axis you can see the um, uh, hair count uh, literally the numbers are representing the hairs the additional hairs that showed up by the week number 12 and 24 and we can see that the oral finasteride with topical finasteride had a very uh, significant um, increase in target area hair count after 12 weeks and were able to maintain it by the week number 24th as well and although placebo also increased from the baseline onto like 7.6 more hairs uh, by the week 12 we can see that the uh, increase hasn't been so significant as with the oral finasteride and topical finasteride and the oral finasteride dose which had been used in this study was one milligram by the way so it's interesting that the one milligram oral finasteride is having a pretty similar target area hair count improvement as the group using uh, you know these uh, 50 microliters of topical finasteride solution which is an equivalent of 0.1 milligram finasteride so it's a 10 times less of a dose and still pretty significant target area hair count improvement after 12 weeks and also 24 weeks so that's pretty cool that again confirms already that microdosing topical finasteride makes sense so yeah, this study again confirms that it makes sense to lower topical finasteride concentration even as low as 0.0125%. And this is just an illustration uh, before and after result of one of the subjects enrolled in the study who had been using the topical finasteride solution every day. How was the DHT suppression of that new solution, uh, new topical finasteride solution which had been microdosed? So on the right we can see again week 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 and 24 and on the left axis we can see serum DHT concentrations in nanograms per deciliter and we see that uh, they started about uh, somewhere between 35 and 40 nanograms per deciliter of DHT in the plasma before the study the placebo didn't change that's the green line we see that it was fluctuating around the same levels 
<clears throat> and then if we take a look at oral finasteride and topical finasteride groups they significantly uh, decreased I mean the DHT has been like significantly reduced in plasma as well however with oral finasteride it has been more compared to topical finasteride with oral finasteride the reduction has been 55.6% and that reduction was pretty much maintained for uh, most of uh, the uh, study period and with topical finasteride the DHT plasma suppression has been 34.5% which is um, yeah pretty significant as well if you compare it to placebo obviously so it's not like topical finasteride comes with zero side effects and you can see that even this very little concentration observed in this study which is like uh, you know equivalent of 0.1 milligram of finasteride oral still can suppress DHT <clears throat> systemically in about 34.5%, all right? So this is something that you should uh, be aware of. But on one hand, on the other hand, it can still give you that decent target area hair count improvement, which is uh, comparable to oral finasteride one milligram. So that's good. But again, uh, it's not gonna be like zero side effect potential, even with that uh, little concentration. This is already a pretty, I mean, you know, if you try to minimize the side effects, I think that's something that I would be definitely looking into instead of just taking oral finasteride one milligram if you are sensitive if you cannot tolerate oral finasteride if you uh whatever reason you don't want to you know lower your dht that much systemically because you uh you feel like your body is also benefiting from that dht you get some additional like neurological protection you get like you you feel like you have more power in the gym and uh, i can understand some guys uh you know can feel that way and in such case i would suggest lowering that plasma DHT as as minimally as possible uh, and that would be this topical finasteride solution which I would probably uh, look into myself I'm using oral finasteride because uh, uh, I don't want to apply something every day I think it's much easier to stick to if I just take a pill and I take also just 0.5 milligram of oral finasteride a day so I also microdose it and I didn't have side effects so far as far as target area hair width before and after the adjusted mean change from baseline to week 24 indicated negligible changes they also did like this uh, observation of the before and after results by independent observer and also by patients themselves and if we take a look at the values uh, between topical finasteride placebo and oral finasteride users we see that assessed by investigator uh, the topical finasteride group got the best score followed by oral finasteride and then placebo uh, the, it had been also assessed by blind assessor uh, also also, the biggest scores uh, were received by oral finasteride here, then followed by finasteride, not with such a big difference, but then followed up by very big difference in placebo, which got the lowest score. And then we have the patient's uh, individual assessment, and we see that uh, there was also significantly higher results with topical finasteride group uh, users and also by oral finasteride group users, and also overall satisfaction or overall change pretty much has been the highest uh, by topical finasteride group it was 26.5 then followed by 25 uh, that was oral finasteride group and then followed by 19.9 .9. so it seems like overall change and satisfaction has been actually pretty decent sometimes even better in the topical finasteride group compared to oral finasteride group as far as side effects obviously they were also reported um, any type of adverse events uh, were actually found in each group like 40 percent of them had adver any type of adverse events in topical finasteride group 42 percent in placebo group also and 48.8 percent in the oral finasteride group but fortunately you see that severe side effects or severe adverse events had been reported only only in 2.2% of the guys using topical finasteride, 1.7% of the guys using placebo, and 2.4% guys using oral finasteride, which is very negligible compared to placebo. We can see also they still also have just 1.7%. Yeah, it's very, very negligible here, uh, but they don't really talk whether some of the, the adverse events were also sexually related uh, or not. It seems like most of the adverse events in the topical finasteride group was uh, a 
itching and uh, dry skin after you apply topical solution. Uh, it can be also uh, with minoxidil or other uh, topicals. Erythema as well in 2.2% of the patients. So that's definitely going to be like these skin related side effects are usually going to be higher in the group using topical solution compared to group using oral solution or placebo, which is usually just like water with saline or something like that. So that's that makes sense. But fortunately, no sexually related side effects with the topical uh, finasteride group, which is great. And if we pretty much conclude the study and their findings in the discussion section, they pretty much say that the main finding of the study was that the change from baseline in hair count was significantly greater with topical finasteride than placebo and similar to that observed with oral finasteride. This result was achieved with markedly lower systemic exposure to finasteride and less impact on serum DHT concentration compared with oral finasteride. Topical finasteride was well tolerated and had a safety profile not meaningfully different from that of placebo. As such, topical finasteride appears to be a useful option for treatment of AGA in men. Further studies would be useful to demonstrate the long-term efficacy of topical finasteride. All right, so that was pretty much it for this video, guys. As we have seen, even concentration as low as 0.0125% used in this study applied uh, once a day uh, had similar target area hair count improvement compared to oral finasteride, one milligram used in that finasteride oral group and had a definitely lower systemic DHT inhibition potential, which is great. And if I would be somebody who's interested in minimizing side effects from finasteride the most, lowering my DHT the least systemically, then I would be looking into this concentration. If you want me to dive deeper into these topics in the next video, or I don't know, uh, me, you know, preparing that solution from scratch, how to lower that concentration to 0.0125%. Uh, I can do it. I have already done it with another video where I was showing the 0.025% uh, solution. Many of the guys tried to also emulate and seen good results with it. So I can do it and yeah. Thank you so much for watching for all of you guys who are interested in a hair transplant and bringing your hairline to the next level with a surgery you don't know you know uh, which doctor to choose you are in the beginning or the middle of the hair transplant research you are evaluating the alternatives but you don't know where to go there are different quotes different you know different doctors like to proceed differently or you are unsure whether it's something you, it's a doctor you should you could trust or not you can consult it with me i definitely specialize right now more in like hair transplant in turkey as well because I visited like 10 plus clinics in there just this year but I'm also visiting clinics worldwide and guys usually consult me for this they want to make a well-informed decision and that's why they book a one-on-one -on -one zoom call with me which you can do as well if you're interested in a hair transplant info is down below that was it guys thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna be seeing you soon in another video take care